Welcome back. Well, I'm not going to speak for anyone else, but this is easily, Spencer, my favorite time of the year. I literally wake up and say to myself, we are one day closer to football season. Now, I got the awesome experience yesterday to head up to Ravens training camp and what is expected to be a huge, huge season in Baltimore. Now, a couple of mainstays are gone this year on defense. Tackle Haloti Nada traded to Detroit in the offseason. And wide receiver Torrey Smith, of course, signed with San Francisco. The Ravens did draft Rashad Perryman in April to replace Smith. Now, Perryman didn't practice yesterday because of a bruised knee, but corner Jimmy Smith was asked about lining up with Perryman on day one and how he compares to Smith. That boy is fast. <laughs> He's fast. <laughs> Perryman straight out, I think, is unbelievably fast. Tory will jog a route, and when the ball gets in the air, will take off on you can't catch it. So it's a different way they run the routes. Both of them completely blazing, but just straight line speed. I, would, I have to see them race. When the NFL corner is telling you you're fast, you know you're fast. <laughs> I watched a video of Perryman on, uh, on the first day. He flew past the corner and made an amazing catch on mm -hmm. the sideline. I think if they can get that kind of production out of him, then they'll miss Smith a little bit in his leadership and what he did off the field. But I think Perryman can definitely step right in there and be what Smith was to them. Yeah, well, I mean, Smith fell off at the end of his yeah. uh, time there. So they're not trying to repair so much or, you know, replace what he was doing so much on the field, kind of what he brought to the team more yeah. than anything. Yeah. And Perryman can definitely be that. I mean, I remember when they first drafted him, I talked to Tony Lombardi, and he said he might have been the steal of the draft, that they yeah. loved this guy, yeah. that they would have thinking of actually going up and getting him. So I tell you what, and you look at him, the size, there's a yeah. lot of things to like 16, about this guy. He has, on paper, he might be one of the better receivers yeah. in the league, and I think he's definitely – the other thing is Joe Flacco is not going to, you know, have any problem airing it out into this yeah, guy. So he's definitely going to have a chance to kind of go get it. So always. it's going to be fun to watch. But oh, yeah. let's go ahead and look at the other side of the ball. We've been talking a little offense. Let's look a little bit at the other side. We got Steve Smith, who last year for the Ravens had the – or he's entering his 16th season and looking to kind of keep up the trend of how well he did last year. And the man – Getting a little long in the tooth, but I tell you what, the numbers <laughs> were no joke last year, finishing with 79 catches and over 1,000 yards. You would think the addition of Brashad Perriman is only going to help him out even more, kind of get some more open looks this mm -hmm. year. But Baltimore may be looking to even expand his role in 2015. The team flirting with the idea of having him at wideout returning kicks this year, something he's done in the past with some success. He does have six touchdowns already to his resume. At some point in time, you put your best players on the field. I mean, punt return is an opportunity in space to make a play, and guys like Steve Smith are pretty good at doing that. So, you know, uh, I like having our best players on the field as much as possible, but we'll have to decide that. You know, I'm a big Steve Smith man. He's, uh, confidence has, has never, oh, always. ever been an issue for always. this guy. He's going to let everybody know he thinks he's the best player on any yeah. field. doesn't matter if it's a baseball field. He's probably thinking he's the best <laughs> player out there. But, I mean, come on. This guy has been in the league forever at this point. You, you don't want to, first of all, make him a liability, have any kind of issues of possibly getting hurt in situations like that. The other part is there's got to be somebody better that can just read blocks. I mean, Steve Smith is good because he can read uh, or he can run routes and stuff. You don't really want him kind of doing yeah. something like this at yeah. that age. There's got to be a guy better out there for him. Well, this is one of the bigger stories yesterday. You lose some weapons on offense, you automatically think, hey, we're going to throw this guy back on punt return. Steve Smith hasn't returned a punt since 2010, hasn't returned a kick since 2006. I don't think Harbaugh wants to kind of mess with that right now, but we'll see. Yeah, it'll be uh, definitely interesting to watch. <laughs> definitely. Well, the secondary is another big concern of the Ravens. When you look at it, they, they have five-year vet Jimmy Smith looking to be the number one corner. Years after Ladarius Webb was holding down that number one spot, Webb was held out of the first practice because he failed a conditioning test, a corner. The defense as a whole looks solid as usual, but if you had to pick a spot, I'd say that secondary is a weak spot. The unit does feature some new vets in safety Kendrick Lewis and Cassius Vaughn. Safety Matt Elam says he's poised for a breakout year. So to say they don't have some talent would be wrong, but they just haven't all played together. They could be a strong, deep group by the end of the season arrives, but Jimmy Smith is, looks to be the rock they lean on. He's quietly underrated, and I think uh, he's really a very good corner that a lot of people don't know about. Long, lengthy, he uses uh, height to his advantage. He does a lot of great things. Um, he's a corner that I watch um, when I go against him, and even when other guys go against him, some of the things that he's able to do. I'll tell you what, Spencer, I'm impressed by the growth of the new Jimmy Smith. He was a guy in the draft who slipped, he had, had some drug charges and some uh, issues. In college at Colorado, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're very documented in, in your mm -hmm. side of on your heard, side of town. Heard a thing or two about it. Yeah, and that nightmarish offseason last year for the Ravens, he was one of the five Ravens arrested. Uh, so he he said some things. He said he, he's a father now. 
He's looking to be settled in. He just signed a contract, uh, $48 million. So uh, if he doesn't settle down now, I don't know what will make him. Here's the deal. People are talking about how he's going to help out that league or their, that secondary. They were terrible last year. I mean, you could sign me today, and I would probably help him out. They get rid of 249. All right. I wouldn't I make them any I worse. They're, they're a bar line. I'm feel like that. They're going to have 249 yards a game yeah. through the air. Yeah. I mean, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. and, I, and pretty much anyone you put back there at this point is going to help. Why not this yeah. guy? That's how I feel about it. But, I mean, they, they got to get some more help than just him, I would yeah. think. Depth is, is helpful there, but they need someone at the top of the lineup to yeah. kind of emerge. Yeah. So. All right, it's time for another quick commercial break. But coming up next, it's time to get to know the funniest man wearing a Shorebirds jersey possibly ever. Keep it right here. You are definitely not going to want to miss this. My name is Jacob Glovier, and I'm the shortstop pitcher for Pigment Warriors. This is Dunwater Sports Insider.